Mike, are you referred to as the godfather of anything? No. Oh, wait, yes. I am. Uh, of, of what? A niece. There you go. Yeah. Other, let me. Re- other than a human being. No. Are you referred to as the godfather of anything? No. Tucker, you? Mm, no. I'm, I'm not either. Can't say that I am. But uh, in this piece from the BBC, there is a computer scientist who's regarded as the godfather of artificial intelligence. And his name is uh, Professor Jeffrey Hint- Hinton. And I'll just give a couple quotes here. He said, I was consulted by the people in Downing Street, Downing Street being the uh, seat of the Prime Minister of the UK. And he said, I was consulted by the people in Downing Street, and I advised them that universal basic income was a good idea as it related to AI. He felt that while AI would increase productivity and wealth, the money would go to the rich and not to the people whose jobs get lost, and that's going to be very bad for society. So, fascinating topic, actually. If you had a world in which one person could wake up every morning and push a button and everything gets done, Hmm. how do you make sure that you are having resources distributed the way... They should be. And what is what they should be? Like the, these are some of the big existential questions that we don't really get to tackle very often. Mm. Because I, I think his point is that under our current form, which is you know basically across the Western world, quasi-capitalism, that, yeah, if it's going the way that Professor Hinton thinks it will, that the majority of the benefits would go to, let's say... Uh, Sundar Pichai and shareholders in Microsoft, and that might not be the best thing for income and wealth distribution across the world. Um, I don't know. Uh, tough to tough to prove a negative there, but I, I would hypothetically, I would hypothetically buy that. Where I push back is that artificial intelligence alone is going to be the piece that causes that. I mean, we've been seeing continued wealth and income distribution now for across the western world for the last i think 30 or 40 years is about what we have seen there and so the question would be does ai bring us to a breaking point on that and what is the appropriate solution to it but i guess more than other technologies i can see how ai would would cause further wealth distribution now he also has some other interesting thoughts i I want to just Set the table with with all this here. Mm. Uh, He also said that my guess is in between 5 and 20 years from now, there's a probability of 50% that we'll have to confront the problem of AI trying to take over that could lead to an extinction, extinction, extinction level event for humans because we have created a form of intelligence that is just better than biological intelligence, and that's very worrisome for us. What I'm most concerned about is when these can autonomously make the decision to kill people. And one of the things that the the DOD has been testing that they publicized actually is, hey, give an AI a list of potential you know military targets and have it suggest which ones should be hit. Yeah. So there are a few different things wrapped up in here. The first is, let's say that you do have, let's say that we get to a point where autonomous systems can do ninety nine percent of the work that we do today. I'm not saying that we're there, but let's... let's 99's extreme. Can we start at, like, 20? Okay, fine. Let's say that they can do 20% of the work that we do today. Which 20% of the work is going to get done first? The easiest 20? Yes. Probably the lowest paying 20. Yep. Also. You know, yep. like, it's it's going to be a much bigger leap of faith for us to say, yep, my next, you know, bypass surgery... Gonna I'm handing off AI. to the AI. Yeah. We're going to say, no, make my Happy Meal with the, the AI. Because yeah. we're, like, there's just less at stake. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. So you're talking about you know, that, that lowest 20% of wage earners in many cases, or you know, even probably just you know, a smattering across kind of bottom 50% of wage earners. You know, sure. call, it, call it almost half of them being displaced from their jobs. Okay. That is a group that very likely, because of, again, how easy it is to replace with AI, likely does not have the skills in many cases to move up to simply, you know, get a new job doing something else. So what do we do in that situation? I don't know. I I, I know what we've done historically. I mean, this is a very different situation, but that exact thing that we're describing is 
kind of what happened with American manufacturing talent. And it's like, fair to say that we did a pretty bad job dealing with that uh, because we ended up with a bunch of hollowed out communities yeah. that have been, you know, ravaged in many cases by, you know, addiction problems and stuff from, you know, just jobs that have been lost and, and you know, centers of activity that have been lost. Yeah. So go, you know, core American manufacturing towns, core American coal mining towns, like not long, sad stories of how we haven't done anything to help those communities. It wasn't really technology driven, but similar overall impact, right? It, jobs disappeared. They were good paying jobs, reasonably good paying jobs, but by a group of people who did not have broad education to be able to go back and, and reinvest in a different type of different type of work. And, and we did very little to to help them agreed and, and those towns are just hollowed out very mm. sad places in a number of cases now mm-hmm. and this has the potential to be something that's coming for us more broadly so when we talk about this idea of universal basic income if you've been living under a rock basic premise of it is hey regardless of whether or not you have a job we are going to pay you x dollars per month in order to live in this scenario i'm not i'm not saying like broadly in this scenario, good idea, bad idea, or ugly idea? Maybe better than doing nothing uh, has a lot of potential pitfalls. What are what are other ideas that we can kick around here? Like, what, what are the other options that we have? You know, people suggest, oh, like job retraining. Well, okay, well, here's the problem with job retraining. We're not very good at that. Let's be honest. We're not very good at simply teaching large groups of people new skills to move into a new job for two reasons. The first is finding large groups of people that are motivated to learn exactly what you're trying to teach them. Yeah. Like they, they might not all want to go and do whatever you're trying to teach. Second piece is identifying what you should be teaching them. If you're teaching them something that, you know, is based on, well, you know, we have the knowledge and ability to do this and this is what was popular two years ago. It might not be where the jobs are in the future. Yeah, the, the uh, piece we covered before about the number of computer science grads graduating right now, with, you know, computer science graduates have increased some 40% over the last decade, and they're graduating into a labor market that might not need them in the same way that people previously thought that they would. And so, yeah, guessing what type of skills are going to be needed, I agree, is challenging. I, I've got plenty of other bad ideas, right? Like we could just try and kneecap the technology to not allow it to take over these jobs. Uh, that won't be successful. Um, big pitfalls to and, and, to and ultimately we we want this is going to sound really messed up at first but I promise I'll make it not sound quite as messed up we want technology to do more so there are fewer humans that have to do these things mm. because ultimately the biggest input for any company is the cost of its labor and the question then becomes, okay, if we can improve this such that we are cutting that cost and improving productivity, like that's how you generate more wealth in a society is by doing more with less. The, the problem we need to solve for is, well, how, if, if you eventually get to the point where one person can push the button and run the factory for the day, what do you do with everyone that you fired? Mm. How do you make sure they can eat? Mm-hmm. And I don't have the answer for that. And I don't think any of us do. Nope. And I think it's fine for us to admit that we don't know what we don't know and that we need to spend some time talking about this because this is not a problem of, hey, all these, like, this is not like, oh, everyone's lazy and no one wants to work. This is, no, people want to work and we have technology that's just going to do it better potentially. And you won't have that job anymore. I'm with you on many of these parts. But I will also just echo something. And again, I'm, I'm willing to buy that AI is different this time. But this is the exact same argument that was made about the printing press, the cotton gin, uh, the internet, and pretty much every piece of new emerging technology over the last, since the beginning of time, 2000 totally. years. So the question remains, is artificial intelligence different this time? And do we need a different set of tools to deal with it? And I, I also don't have the answer to that question. You don't want to listen to The Godfather? Yeah, I'll listen. This is all we have to do. Again, I don't think any of us know exactly where this is going to go. And and most of the time, by the way, as, as Mike said, 
yes, you have this technological progress. And as I like to point out often, when the printing press was invented, the Stone Tablet Carvers Union was probably Pissed. all up in arms. Yeah. They said, yo, Gutenberg, you better chill with this. Indeed, they did. That's, it was written Indeed on the stone tablets. We, yep. we saw it, actually. But ultimately, you want this kind of progress. It's how do we figure out how everything fits after is something we have to, to deal with. And the other thing that I will say, Mike, when, when we talk about a lot of those you know, inventions that we've seen, it's easier for us to kind of gloss over and be like, oh, well, everything turned out fine. Yeah, but it didn't necessarily for the people who were affected directly yeah. by it. Yep. And that's something that we have to live through when it comes to AI here.